Which squad are we going to represent for this draft? It is going to be the Golden Knights. Fantasy draft will, of course, be on. That's the whole point. You know, it won't be on, though. Jabroni editing my lines. Nice try. Now, before we get into this thing and people are like, hey, yo, this guy's just making up rules on the spot. I would like to establish the ground rule that if someone has some light stubble, I'm going to count that because some people could shave the day before, wake up the next morning and their facial hair is like, oh, by the way, I'm back. You thought you could get rid of me, eh? Obviously, I'm going to have to tread lightly with that. If there's any that I'm kind of iffy about, then I will go ahead and skip. Let's find out what draft position we are going to have as the Golden Knights I kind of want near the middle for some reason reason and I don't get my wish because we get the third. Hmm. McDavid is probably going one. I don't think Kale McCarr has any facial hair so hopefully he doesn't go two which he probably will. Oh yes they took Quinn Hughes. That McDavid picture doesn't really look like facial hair but I feel like I'd have to see it you know on the inspect player kind of thing the bigger picture. This should go without saying but obviously I'm just going based off the pictures in this game because if someone has facial hair in real life right now how am I supposed to know that? I think both of these players are eligible. Nate Mack and Kale McCarr clean shaven. Which one do I want? Or I could go with Jack Hughes. You know what let's go with the defense wins championships approach Kale McCarr is joining our team I think that counts right I'm kidding calm down I'm not kidding with this guy though Jake Gensel nothing going on there 90 overall he is clean shaven welcome to the Golden Knights I guess we hired Lou yup Zach Hyman left wing slash right wing 89 overall and he has a gold ability in this game plus four silvers to go along with it that is fire I also don't have my glasses on when I record because of the glare so if I do mess one of these up could you just please let it slide thanks in advance I appreciate you so I'm thinking we stick Jake and Bake on the left Zach Hyman on the right Bo in the middle then we got Kale McCarr on defense. My next two picks should probably be a goaltender and a defensive partner for Kale. McCarr is right-handed, so we got to find a clean-shaven left-handed defenseman. Yeah? You know, that's sort of like the light stubble going on in the stash area, but this is one of the ones I was talking about where I feel like it counts. 87 overall, making 7 million. Brady Shea, welcome aboard. How are we already down to 86 overall? What happened? Vili Huso is an option. I couldn't tell if that was a little bit on the chin there, but he is wearing an Islanders jersey, so it's definitely just a shadow. Semyon's gonna be our starting goaltender. He was only making 2.7 as well, so that's awesome. Essel Lindell could be a good second pair defenseman for us. 86 overall, absolutely. And and then there's this guy. What a legend. Trevor Moore, 85 overall, making 4.2. That's not brutal. And he's a playmaker, second line. I like it. Brock Nelson has four abilities. I did not see that coming. Six million. Wearing an Islanders jersey again, so definitely does not have anything going on there. This will bring us to around $30 million of cap left, and we are nearing the halfway point of the team. Why not? Right-handed defender, 84 overall, Josh Manson is our next selection. I had to look up this exact picture on Google just to be sure, but we're clear. Evan Rodriguez, he's also on a pretty team-friendly deal here at 3 million. Let's make it happen. Our team is currently rocking a big goose egg in natural right-wingers. Good times. This is prime for a backup goaltender. 83 overall, making just 1 million. Casey. Come on. This will be our 13th player and it will bring us to around 17 million left. I think we should be able to make that work. So David Perron is affordable for us. Let's do it. He's got a little bit of stubble going on, but I'm going to go ahead and say that he passes the vibe check. 83 overall, 2.8 million. Yeah. Let me talk to you. Yeah. There has to be a right winger. Kyle Palmieri. 5 million though is a little steep. 2BC legend Evgeny Dadanov. What about Pontus Holmberg? A left shooting right winger who is making less than a mil, 80 overall. All right. See, to me, this seems like a little bit more than stubble, but it could be this guy just grows facial hair like crazy. I'm just going to finish up defenders so that we just need forwards. So we have right, left, and then we have left, right. We need one final right-handed defender. I think so, right? Yeah, that definitely counts enough. Could we take Braden Shen and have both the Shens? He does have an ability. 82 overall. Has an Islanders jersey on. We need three more picks after this. Six million dollars to get it done. Should be doable. All right, Pajot. Is it Max Pacioretty or is it Mr. Bean? You be the judge. Either way, a left-wing sniper that could maybe get some depth goal scoring for us. So again, I'm looking at this picture on Google. That is definitely like an eye shaved yesterday and it's still just kind of coming through. So it's going to count. Evgeny Dadanov, 2BC legend. And now would you looky here? We got 4.1 for one final player. With the final selection of the draft, we will be going with Eric Robinson. Jersey number 50. It's crazy. I like it. There's a quick peek at our draft summary this team looks like it has potential for sure 
I keep forgetting about this new franchise layout. I'm gonna ask again, hardcore franchise mode people out there, do you like it or no? They definitely added some cool stuff this year with the trading and the state tax and all that. I'm a big fan of that first line. Jake and Bay Corvat and Zach Hyman is a plus four. Call me crazy because it's probably true, but I'm moving Dadanov up because he's a sniper. And then we've got Moore who's a playmaker and a power forward in the middle. I just think that that's a good combo. Technically he works, but you are certainly not the person I drafted. They're out here scratching Eric. That is unbelievable. Get in there. I'm sorry to do this to you, Evan, but we got to have a center. Actually, you know, what if I do that? Oh yeah, there we go. Rodriguez could be third line then. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, hello. Oh, perfect. This is a little bit worrisome. Defensive chemistry, not exactly it. What if we move Brady Shea up? Okay, so now we get a 0-0-1. That's not as bad. Unfortunately, I think that's just the way we're gonna have to run with it. Varlamov could be really good, but he's also 85 overall in this game. So we'll have to wait and see. This could be our weak spot to Smith as a backup. So we have two reliable goaltenders. Gensel gets the most points with 93. The team gets 45 wins and we are in the playoffs. Let's simulate. Dadanov is still staring me down from my Google search over here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Come on here, fellas, you gotta dig deep. This is the finals, dig in! I actually just started to watch that series. I'm only partway through the first episode, but it's actually really good. The team is not doing hot. I think I'm gonna have to go run best lines and maybe just hope for the best. As you guys may or may not know, it depends on how new you are to this channel. We struggled mightily in NHL 24 with these drafts. It took a long time before we saw some success and a long time before we finally won a cup. I was genuinely starting to think we might just not get one. Especially with some of the teams I assembled with the website I built, like it's crazy. We should have automatically won the Stanley Cup, but no. The lads are in fact digging in here a little bit. We are now fourth in the division and had quite a lot of wins in a row. Two more games before the deadline. This is gonna be interesting because I haven't done a fantasy draft in this game yet. Will there be a lot of trades after the draft like there was in 24? Jay Theodore at the top here of the available players, Ekblad, Kreider, Aiden Hill. There's a lot of good players here actually. I see trade alert at the bottom. Is that new? I know they've had it in be a pro, but if they had it in franchise mode, they probably have and I'm just oblivious, but I don't know. Don't you dare have a post trade deadline collapse. There's no way that this still exists. Five straight losses out of the deadline is not what we're after here. I don't think we're going to make it. 38 wins. We're probably going to win maybe four of these last few games here. We have 84 points. The team that clinched up there is 91. I think it's already set in stone, actually. I don't see wild card anywhere. And we win the last two games for a grand total of 42, which was kind of close to what I guessed, I think. Well, that's a tough start to NHL 25, but it is what it is. The Stanley Cup final is between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Winnipeg Jets. Let's go see what their teams look like. Holy crap, I had to look at Anaheim because it's the first team it just defaults here but they got ov crosby and seb these two paired together should be lethal i mean sure they're up there in age but the winnipeg jets have nico playing with pappy and lucas raymond that is a very good first line their second line is sus they have Kreider, bokefist and then zetterland paterka turcott and Hagel on their third why is their third line better than their second oh yeah here we go defensively kevin ball 79 overall on the first pair with jamie drysdale so that's what it's gonna be okay good job simulation engine 84 overall logan thompson in the net because of course the pity pens have slavkovsky playing with suzuki and nichushkin that's a good first line hartman domi and rust i really like that second line actually their bottom six could get by it's not bad miro the hero on defense with sean dersey 92 overall look at him go and then they've got martinez dumba actually their whole defensive core is really good and they have linus allmark in net backed up by elvis so yeah this team makes sense they are kind of lacking on offense but yeah, you know what? No, it doesn't really make that much sense. We're gonna go one game at a time here and see who is going to emerge victorious. So far, Winnipeg takes the one nothing series lead, but Pittsburgh comes back and ties it up. It is going to be 2-1 Winnipeg. They are exchanging W's right now. Will Pittsburgh tie it up again or are the Jets gonna take a big 3-1 series lead? They do. Can they close it out? No, Pittsburgh not gonna go down without a fight. They still need to win two more in a row here and they push a game seven. I want to like go in and watch this, but we can't. Advanced day. It is going to be the Winnipeg Jets. Wow, the Penguins could have won both. We ended up fifth in our division with 88 points. So that is definitely going to be the bottom half of the league. The Edmonton Oilers finished second with 105 points. And there you go. The Ducks were second in the league, 103. So that makes sense. You've got to be kidding me. We actually were in the top 16. 
and we got finessed because of our conference. Unbelievable. Not my playoff system. Unfortunately, because the season's over, we can't view the lines anymore, but we can check them here. Vitrano, Johnston, and Kucherov as the first line. Barbashev, Norris, and Besser. That's pretty good. Owen Zell. What? Nah, I'm not buying it. The team struggled with offense again. Kale McCarr led the team with 80 points, and then it drops off by 10 to Jake Gensel. Horvat and Hyman both had 68. I mean, their plus minus was good, but score more goals. Kale McCarr with a humble 56 point gap on the next defenseman. So we did struggle with goaltending. Varlamov had a sub 900, 318. DeSmith did quite well for some reason. Smaller sample size, sure, but I mean, those numbers are great. Allmark led the league with 40 wins, had a 915 while he was at it. 267 GAA, very good season. Swayman had a 919 and Markstrom had a 921. Oh, would you look at that? Kale McCarr actually had the most points by a defender this year. Roman Yossi seems to be a goal scoring machine in this game but 80 points got the job done Yossi had 77 75 for Charlie McAvoy and somehow some way Kucherov put up 124 points with 63 tucks you kidding me Kirill the Thrill had 119 and was still a dash 13. Holy crap, how do you pull that off? 63 goals as well. I feel like these point totals seem a little bit more realistic compared to last year. Drysaddle 118, Matthews 110. I drafted Wyatt Johnston in fantasy and I kind of got a steal on him pretty late, so I hope this happens. Kucherov keeps the art heart intact and the Norris goes to Yossi. Come on. Another trophy for Cooch. I feel like he's going to get a lot. Cutter Goche with the Calder. Matthews gets the Con Smythe. Mark will gather himself both the Vesna and the Jennings. Ball with the Bill Masterton. Okay. Agostini gets the Jack Adams. Crosby awarded the Selkie. Dry Seidel with the Lindsay. And then the Rocket Richard is split between Cooch and Cap. It wasn't the most successful first draft, but we do have a lot ahead of us here. So plenty of time for us to do well. We kind of got finessed because of the whole division conference thing. Finished in the top half of the league, but... That's just the way it is. Appreciate you guys as always. If you attempt this draft, go ahead, let me know what your team looked like and how they did. On that note, I will see you soon.